my camera yet. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Hi, I'm Gary Jenkins, and welcome to the beauty of oil painting. Today, I have something really different. A lot of you guys are out there used to me uh, painting uh, florals. Today, we're going to do a woodland uh, scene. It's a tree with some leaves coming up and around, beautiful. Look at that, we have a little birdie in there. <laughs> and we have flowers down around the bottom. This is a beautiful scene. I prefer to paint scenes like this rather than the full out landscapes with all the, the mountains and the trees and stuff. I really like the, just a close up of nature. Uh, because a lot of times when you're walking through the woods, you don't stop and, and, and enjoy the little things that are happening. Look at the base of a tree. Even weeds and, and wildflowers have their own special beauty. If we learn just to appreciate the little stuff in life, it'll make you a much happier person and a better painter. There we have the canvas. Yeah, I've got the little birdie already in because you guys know I don't have a lot of time to put these, this stuff in, but it'll be in the book for you. What do I have on here? Well, this is dry. This background is acrylic, and it's kind of a yellows and blues, muted greens back in here. The, the tree trunk is sienna's, a little kind of a red with the uh, umbers, very dark on the bottom, little touches of cerulean blue, and I just left the bird floating out there. Now, when you put your tree in, don't put it in straight, but have it at a slight angle. But don't angle it any more than that, because you don't want it going from corner to corner. So right about there is a good place for it. I also have some ochre in here, starting just a little bit of a highlight going. We're going to come down to the old palette. Let's take, I'm going to work on that big trunk. And we're going to take some sienna, and let's, and maybe a little burnt over. Just to kind of darken it up a little bit. And I'm going to come up here and wet it down a little bit. Just kind of very dry going right over the uh, acrylic. Then maybe we'll start some of the uh, texture going. In a minute, we're going to take a knife and come up here and really go for some texture. Whoa, hello. And leave some openings in. Don't fill everything in. It's very important to have that base tone in there, guys, because it really helps you paint. What we're doing here when we're painting, is we're letting some of that base tone show through. And I'm working very, very, very dry. I want to concentrate the light right in here. So I'm going to take a little more white. And we're going to come right in here and hit, hit, leave some open. Hit. Can you see it happening? You see how we're going to get a very dramatic touch. I just wiped my brush. White, 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 white. And take some of that paint off as we come on over to the dark side. Yeah. I'm going to borrow some. Look at it. And let's slowly, slowly bring it back down. Wipe the brush. Bring it back down to the dark. Take your finger and just pull it in. We want some mystery in our painting. We don't want to have highlights all over the place and this and that. The eye, it's unnatural looking if you have highlights all over the place. If you have everything's interesting, well, the eye doesn't do that. The eye will focus in one spot. And on the outside peripheral edges, everything is sort of out of focus. Now we're going to get some texture. We're going to take the good old painting knife. And we're going to come down. Let's take this ochre which has, I've already pre-mixed, ochre and sienna. Ochre and burnt sienna. And we're not going to start out too light. We'll just sort of test it up here. And very slowly, just let it come on down. Let it break up as it comes down. We're going to take a little uh, ochre and white, very dry, and come up here. Just let it break up. Let it break up. There it goes. Look at it happen. 
Now, instead of just putting it down and leaving it, you can go in and play with it. Take some of it and pull it out. You see? Uh -huh. In case you didn't get the effect you want, you can still play. But that looks pretty good. We're going to come up to the top. Coming over into more of our sienna. To darken it up a little. And we're going to come in here in the dark area. And drag it. And kind of push the brush, the, brush, the knife along. Uh -huh. Let's take a little more of that ochre. Yellow ochre, touch of white. And let's let it break up. Breaking up is hard to do. This is so cool. I could spend all the whole program just doing this part. <laughs> Come on down. Yeah. We're going to go into that light spot that we had our brush work going for us. We're going to take some white. This white that's on this knife, let's go down the palette. I come along, yes, I'll pick up a little bit on the edge. You, you guys are familiar with that. And come on up. But it's not so much how you load, it's really the touch, which is super light. And if you hit light, it'll break up for you to get those wonderful darks in between. Now look at that. Now coming down, if you want. Pull that into the dark, we we'll just take our finger and pull it in. Simple, simple, simple. A little more light. I'm going to put this up on the lip of the canvas and really go ahead and get some stuff. Yes! And we'll just take our finger and pull it the rest of the way into the dark. This isn't in the painting, <laughs> but we could put a little shot coming out like that. Maybe something here. Just to break that edge up a little bit. Maybe something there. Oops, something there. Something coming out of there. Cool. I lost some of my light. I want to go back into the light. And really get this. Right in there, but that's what I want. We're going to take some burnt umber and with our little brush and put in some little darks because when you use your knife, it doesn't always leave everything the way you want it. So we have to help the knife along and put these little darks in. Maybe that little birdie has a little nest inside the tree. Right there. Okay. Uh -huh. I recently had some pigeons. Uh, mommy and Daddy Pigeon built a nest in the eave of my roof. And they had their little babies in there. Yeah. And when the babies were just partially grown, one of them fell out of the nest. Yeah. And my wife, Catherine, says, well, you can't put them back in the nest because mommy won't feed them. I said, well, we can't leave them on the patio. So I, <laughs> I went on the web site, looked up pigeons, and it said, yeah, you can put them back in the nest. So I put some gloves on and uh, put the little guy back up in the nest, and mama came along and started feeding her. <laughs> what a great day that was. Kathy, I we sat on the porch and had a little glass of wine and we toasted the baby. Mm -hmm. How we do it up here? Cool. And the, the babies are still in the nest. But we're waiting for them to fly out, but they're still there. And every morning, they're like our children. We have to go out there and see how they're doing. One morning, we'll go out and they'll probably be fly away. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Now, we're going to take our blue color. It's really in blue and green. Yes, we're going to take every, you know how I love the, the cool reflected lights. And we'll put that in 
Very dry guy. Guys, very dry. Look at that. Very dramatic. And you notice how I skip along and leave some darks and I'm working dry. dry, dry. Yes. Now, why I work dry? Because there's a little bit of resistance to the brush on the canvas. This is portrait smooth canvas. Now, I'm really punching the light up here. Now, in the photograph, this blue wasn't even in there. No. I see could, there's a little warmth in there. Sometimes you see stuff. <laughs> and I'm going to come in here and just put, oh, oh, yes. Just a hint. Oh, just a hint. Whoa, whoa. That won't work there. Follow your instincts, guys. It's always right. Don't you love that little bit of touch of me? Maybe something there. I'm dry brushing. Just get in and play with it. The photograph won't give you everything. Over here on this little stump that's sticking up. Yes. Well, you know by now who I like. And pull that out. Yes. <laughs> My pinky used to be that long. I wore it down. Doing all this, this blending stuff. How are we doing? Cool. I want a couple more of those knots on the top. Right up here. Okay. Now we're going to take a brush. That's called a liner brush. Let's come down and look at this. That's sometimes called a twiggy or a liner or a rigger. It goes by. I just call it the brush with the long hair. <laughs> We're going to take that, and starting from the bottom, come on up. We're going to cut across the tree, and we're going to just reach for some more. This is burnt umber. I'm going to come along way up here, and then I'm going to turn and come down, and give this little birdie a place to rest. Yes. Now he makes sense. Now, I probably, because you know I only have a short amount of time, won't get everything in, but I'll get enough of it in to show you, give you an idea of how to go with it. Now this is very viney. Boy, I tell you. Now let me show you something you don't want to do when you're doing vines. I'm going to show you right up here. I'll probably mess my painting up. But don't wiggle like this. You see that? Don't do that. Uh, vines just don't do that. Uh, it gets too wormy looking, and it will weaken your pain. So let's take some turf. <laughs> See how I sacrifice for you guys? Well, went my way. And sometimes you can start at the tip. You see? Now you can wiggle a little, but not much. Oh, oh, oh. It comes right. We have, and again, I won't get everything in, but we'll get a lot of stuff going, it's just lined up. A lot of this is in the, in the room. And wet your brush. You have to work with a wet brush. Otherwise, your uh, stroke will be fat and wide and it won't have a nice graceful look to it. So, we're going to put that in. We have another one. Here. Whoa! This is what I liked about this painting, was all this stuff. All the vines, I think. In a minute, we'll put some leaves on all that. We have to get, sometimes uh, we have to get this in first. We have, now it's picking up, you might have to wait for it to dry a little before you get it nice and dark right there. And we're going to come along this way. Now here's something that's interesting about composition. Notice how I brought this vine or twig or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's going to frame our little birdie. I'm going to bring another one this way. Facing towards the bird. And we'll have some coming from the top. Some coming up. And as it comes to the end, it tapers. And it's very delicate. Don't get blobby and thick. If you do, all the, line, all the little twigs will be distracting from everything else. This little birdie, I want to tie it. <laughs> this little birdie is called a rose-breasted rose beak, G-R-O-S, beak. And he winters 
in the tropics. I don't get to go to the tropics. But this little fellow here, he gathers up his family and they pack their bags and they are off. They say, I'm not going to stay here while it's, while it's cold. No way. And then they come back. Now, we have vines all over the place. Let's come in and put some leaves, I'm still using the line brush, on all these twigs. And again, I won't get it all in. This is just upper. Nice dark. And we twig it up, or leave it up. And maybe as you come down towards the end, it gets smaller. See, I push down and pull up, which gives me a leaf effect. You push down and pull up. And that's all it, it, there is to it. Some of them are really blocked in close to each other. So don't just put one in, leave a space, put one in, leave a space. Otherwise it gets boring. Oh, I got some of that ochre, but it looks good. Put that in there. Coming on down, another one in here. And maybe Oh, there's leaves all over the place. <laughs> now this painting is just a very simple painting, and I think it's, it's one you guys will enjoy. You just go in and have fun with leaves. On the bottom, we have our leaves down here. Coming in. Just hold your brush towards the back, and keep your leaves nice and loose. And free. Right over that blue. Look at that. So it sets the blue back. It adds a little mystery to your paint. I like paintings with mystery. Yeah. Here, here, here. And again, when you do yours, don't try to do it as fast as I'm doing it. Take, take your time. It's a wonderful painting to do. A little uh, linseed on the brush. Make our our strokes move along a little faster. Some of the leaves are blocked in where they're just sort of touching each other. Way down there in the dark. Maybe another one comes out here. Okay. Don't have to do much to that. I already had some uh, some uh, blue on there from the underpainting, which is great. Now, up in here, we're going to add a little color. Let's take a little yellow and orange. I'm going to come up here and play. Whoa! Oh, honey. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And let's take some of our wonderful cad red light and mix it with orange. Should get a little bit. Just a hint of it. A little bit in there. Now, now I'm cooking. We're cooking. Don't put too much color in there, but just enough. Let's taper that. So it comes in. Kind of pulls the red from the bird up into a. Now there's just a touch of it here, not much. There's a little over here, not too much. And let's come on down. Let's take and change color. Say a little uh, yellow green. Uh, some of our yellow. Then we have some of it here. Okay. And again, you have more time. Take your time with what you're doing. Yeah. But the stroke, again, is with this long twiggy brush. Push down and pull up. So it tapers. That's all I'm doing. See? And when down on the bottom, we want to bring some of that nice autumn color down here. And just hit and keep it loose. The trick here is to keep it loose and keep it free and not tighten up. As you start tightening up, and the whole painting will get too busy. But I like the way that blue is showing and the red. A little of the color over here, but not too much. Probably we'd want to pick up more umber and put that in. leaves in there. Maybe a little more in here. There's 
lots of leaves in here. <laughs> On the bottom, before I run out of time, I want to show you what we're going to do down there. We have some little daisies. This is done with the uh, brown brush. And we come in. Now, these flowers were not in the photo that I took. Uh, a lot of this wasn't in the photo. <laughs> but as an artist, this adds human interest to the painting, as that little birdie does. Because without this little daisy work and that little birdie that's up there, we really wouldn't have much of anything. Just have a little tree trunk staring at you. Come out in here, and we're going to come in and put some right here. And maybe another one out here. And put in as many as you want. And you say, well, how do I know when I have too many? Well, you just stop just before it looks bad. <laughs> okay, look at this. Now, I won't get all these daisies in, I know it. But again, uh, it'll be in the book for you guys to look at, because you need a picture. A little touch of red to uh, bring that, that autumn color down. There's a whole bunch more in here. Now you can fake them in. You don't have to show every detail. Just show a few. The eye will fill the rest in. What I mean by show a few, show detail, maybe here. You see how I'm showing detail in that? And the eye goes, oh, OK. So everything else must be the same. Just a little optical illusion trick we do. Kind of clean that one up. And maybe now I'm looking the whole thing over, checking it out. Make sure we have everything in there. There's a lot more flowers, but I won't have time to get them all. But I'm going to put a little touch in here. Maybe break that up. Ah, oh, yes, yes. I like this area right there. That's cool. But I like my birdie too. <laughs> and let's take, uh, what else do we have in here? Oh, we have little baby buds. You can take a little red, orange on the brush, a little green on the tip. And you can run your brush along and push, run your brush along and push, 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 just like we do with the flower leaves. And we can have all this little, little bud stuff going. I remember when I was a kid, I used to walk around in the woods. And I would love to stop and just just look at a lot of this little stuff happening. Waterfalls. They would stop and listen to the falls. The falls would actually have a beautiful sound to them going over the rocks. And even when the forest is quiet, the quiet has a sound. In the morning, I like to sit out on my patio in the back. And I'll watch the little birdies. We have a little feeder, a little water, a place where they get water. And I watch them drink. And I notice the little birds, when they, put, when they go for a drink, they just drink about, when you put their head down maybe two or three times, that's it. That's all they need because they're so small. <laughs> so I, I study all this stuff. I don't know. Maybe I'm nuts. But I don't have to go to the movies. I just go in my backyard. And I tell you, there's so much going on back there with these little birds and the squirrels. My little pigeons that took up, started nesting up in my roof. I watch, I say hello to the little babies because they're peeking their heads out waiting for mama to come and mm -hmm. feed them. Well, now you have more time on yours, but it doesn't look too bad, but it does need more flowers and more stuff down here. But you can do that, I'm sure. Anyway, I hope your painting turns out great. And don't forget out there that you might just want to take a walk in the woods, and if you're lucky and if you're quiet, you might see one of these little birds sitting on a limb. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.
Okay. That was a good one. You look turned out. You look good. So the, the knife stones look cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it. We haven't seen you do, do that before. Huh? We haven't seen you do that before. I know. Well, you know, I'm having to, more series I do, I'm having to reinvent myself. <laughs> But that was cool. I liked the way the knife went along. Yeah. It looks better on the TV than it does here. Were you able to see everything on there? It did great. Thank you. <laughs>